So the next thing that I want you to look at. Uh, does everyone have a slide already on, in the, clipped in? All right, so what I want you to look at next is uh, the lenses. So don't, don't do this, but I'm gonna take it out so you, so you can see. This is the ocular lens. It's good? Oh, in a, in a minute. Yeah. These are the ocular lenses. Um, the, magnif the magnification that these lenses provide, there are two of them, one for each eye, magnification that they provide is 10 times magnification. The way to represent that is 10x. So ocular, the ocular lenses provide 10 times magnification, 10x. Ten times magnification. Not everyone's eyes are the same width, so um, you can change the width of them just by twisting them back and forth, kind of like binoculars. And for some of you, oh, doesn't have it. For some of you, you might notice that in one of the lenses, there's going to be this little black line. That's within the lens, or like it's next to the lens, it's, it's meant as a pointer. So if we want to refer to something, that's one way to point to something. See this rubbery thing, the round rubbery thing? That's the nose piece. Whenever you need to move something, whenever you want to move the lenses around, use the nose piece. So we're starting at these objective lenses, and we can change them around. The lowest one is 4x, there's another at 10, and there's another at 40, and maybe you have one at 100. So these are additional lenses, because again we have a compound light microscope. And by having two lenses at once, that allows us to have a higher magnification. So can someone tell me if I have if I'm viewing using the 4x objective, what's my total magnification? 40. You multiply the two. 10x ocular, 4x objective, that gives you 40x total. So what you're looking at is 40 times bigger than what it actually is. That's what that means. Uh, what would be the highest magnification then? 1,000. 10 times 100, it gives you 1,000. <clears throat> so go ahead and fill out this table. I'll give you a second. But uh, these lenses have special names. Whenever you start out looking at something, which we're going to do in a second, whenever you start out looking at something, you always want to start at the lowest objective. You're going to start at the 4x objective, which is called the scanning lens because you're scanning for something. You're, you're, you're starting out your search. The 10x objective is called the low, low power lens. The 40x objective is the high power lens. Note that the low and high power lenses are not the lowest nor the highest. They're in between, they're in the middle. We will primarily be using these three lenses, 4x, 10x, and 40x <laughs> objective lenses. This last one, the 100X, is an oil immersion lens, and without getting into the physics too much, um, you need to put a drop of oil underneath the lens to see it more clearly. If it comes to that, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to use it, but we're primarily not going to go to this. The other reason is, uh, can anyone tell you what you notice about the 100X? It's very close. There's a very high chance of you breaking the, breaking the slide, which I've definitely done before uh, when I started out. Um, so we're not going to use this to start out. If we need to, we, we'll, I'll show you how to use it. But for now, don't bother because you don't need it for, for our purposes. We're going to be using the scanning, low and high objective lenses, high, high power lenses. We're not really going to use the oil immersion lens. So our total magnifications for each of these, um, 40, 100, 400, 1,000. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is try, and I'll come around and help, and Amy too, maybe. <laughs> um, 
whatever it is you have on your slide, try to get it centered using the, the, the stage adjusting knobs. And then you have two big knobs, one, one bigger, one smaller knob on the right side. Actually, it's on both sides. So it doesn't matter which one you use. It's the same thing. The big knob is called the coarse focus knob. The smaller knob is called the fine focus. Both of them move the stage up and down in this Z axis. But the coarse one does it quickly. The fine one does it slowly. When you're in the scanning lens, when you're using it for 4X, which you should be using right now, when you're at 4X, it's fine to use the coarse focus. There's no danger of damaging the slide. So I can go up and down really quickly and it's, and it's fine. But once I get it into focus, so let's say, I want you to see what I'm seeing. Okay, so right now, I have a letter E on this slide. It's not in focus, clearly. But once I do get it in focus, so that's using the coarse adjustment knob. Now I can use the fine adjustment knob to get it in perfect focus. <laughs> Seems pretty clear to me. I can center it a bit more. Once that's in focus at 4X objective, I. I know it seems dangerous, but it's going to be fine. If it's in focus, it's fine. I'm going to swivel to 10x. And then only use fine focus. And once that's in focus, now I can swivel to 40x. It's really dark. <laughs> the, the high, you'll notice the higher magnification you go, the darker it'll be, which is why you want to adjust the lighting. So I'm going to turn a little brighter, change it to some focus. And we are in really high focus. You can see those droplets of ink of this letter E. So that's what I'd like you to do right now. I'll, we'll come around and help. Try to get whatever it is you have in focus, first starting at 4X, then go up. You do not go up to high magnification until you get in focus at 4X. All right? We'll come around and show me if you've got it. Or if you need help, let me know. And I know you're in pairs, so switch off. Once you get in focus, one person, the other person tries. Just a hit or a heads up. On the practical, I will expect you to do this. On the practical, I will expect you to know how to get things in focus. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, don't go to 100 X. Jack, it's not on 40 X Jack. Yeah. It's the, you can measure the distance from the stage to. Okay. I was trying to explain that. Yeah, there's working distance, field of view diameter, and uh, south side. That's really <laughs> Anyone else need help? If you need help, raise your hand. When I started doing my microscopy, it took me forever to get used to it. So I know I do it really quick up here. I don't expect you to do it really quick, but I want you to get that practice. Need help? Raise your hand if you want to check. Raise your hand. Do I got to focus? Go on, <laughs> okay. We'll get to our microscopes more in a minute, but let me point up something up. Point something out up here. You might have noticed that the higher objective you go, the less distance there is between your slide and the lens. 
That's called your working distance. The distance between your slide and your lens, that's called working distance. And that amount decreases with higher objectives. I know one of your one of your things on your uh, lab checks is to measure this. I just want a rough estimate. We have rulers, so I think they're in the back. Um, I just want you to rough estimate of the size, the distance between the slide and the lens. If you're in focus, if you're in focus at 4x, and then you swivel to 10x, and then if you're in focus at 10x, and then you swivel to 40x, there is minimal danger of cracking the slide, which is why you need to get in focus here first. Always start here, no matter what. Please. <laughs> My previous class didn't get that. Yeah. <laughs> Always start at 4x. Get that in focus, and then go from there. OK, now we're going to get to some more technical stuff. This usually is usually where I lose some people, so I'm going to do my best to explain this clearly. Um, when you look through your microscope, you're seeing this circular thing. Uh, I can give you an example. I've taken pictures of all the things that we've done here. Have you all looked at the shared photo album already? If you haven't, I really encourage you to. Go to the home page, hit, hit shared photo album. It's this, this Google photo album with a ton of photos, including everything that you're seeing today, everything that you haven't seen yet. So uh, yeah, OK. So here is a picture of something. It's from the kidney. Don't worry about that. But you can see how it's a circle. So this is what you're seeing through the microscope. What you see, so this, this space that you see, that's called your field of view. So what you're seeing, that, that space is called the field of view, FOV. It's the thing that you're seeing, the field of view. It happens to be circular because that's what that's the shape of the lens. One thing I want you to do, it's the, really the only math I'm expecting to do in this class, is to estimate cell size. To estimate cell size, you need to know a few things. Like, what is the size of this field of view? In other words, what is your field of view diameter? Uh, raise your hand if you have a grid slide. Does anyone have a grid slide? I think I'm late. Oh, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I'll show you. Okay, so here's a grid slide. It, and each little notch on this grid, any guesses what each little notch represents? A, mil a millimeter. Every notch, every notch on this grid represents a millimeter. All right, let me show you what I have here. All right, always start at 4x. And I'm going to get that in focus. All right. Okay, so when I show you things up here, even though I'm at 40x total magnification, the camera enhances it a bit more. So what I'm showing you here isn't what you actually see. So in that case, let me show you something else. Uh, this is what you'd actually see. Okay, so each grid here represents one millimeter. One, two, three, four, five. Five grids. So what's the field of view diameter? What's the field of view diameter at 40x total magnification? Sorry? Five millimeters. TM, that's total magnification. Sorry. At a total magnification of 40x, our field of view diameter is um, 5 millimeters. Right. Does that make sense so far? Clarifications? Okay. So at, at the 4x objective, at 4x total magnification, our field of view diameter is 5 millimeters. What did I say I want the measurement to be in, though? Millimeters or? 
micrometers, yeah. So if this is a thousandth of a meter and this is a millionth of a meter, can anyone do the math of what the difference is? How many times? It's a thousand, yeah. To get from a millimeter to a micrometer, it's a thousand times. So in other words, our conversion factor, one millimeter, a millimeter is bigger than a micrometer. One millimeter equals 1,000 micrometers. One millimeter equals 1,000 micrometers. So, if our field of view diameter at 40x is 5 millimeters, 5,000 micrometers. Great. Is everyone good with that math? Verifications. Okay. So that's at um, that's at 40x total. This is at oh, and just to give you a sense of scale, um, this is about the size of an ant. At 40x, an ant would take up this entire space. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> An ant that would take up that entire space at 40x total. All right, what about at what about at a total magnification of 100x using the 10x objective? What's our field of view diameter there? Using that same grid, you can see these squares fit across once. Twice. Two millimeters or 2,000 micrometers. At 100x magnification, the field of view diameter is 2,000 micrometers. So if we looked at the same ant under here, the ant would be massive, it would be really big. And it would take up most of this view. Uh, right. At our high power lens, 400x, at our high power lens, our field of view diameter is, uh, you'll just have to trust me, when we look at the grid under the microscope, one square uh, takes up double the size. So 0.5 millimeters or, 0.5 millimeters or how many micrometers? 500. 500. You should you should memorize these numbers. It's just going to be easier for you to. At 40x total, the field of view diameter is 5,000. At 100x total, the field of view diameter is 2,000. At 400x total, the field of view diameter is 500. I would write this down and keep it somewhere that you can easily refer to as you get used to it. Um, what, uh, like my sense of, to give you a sense of scale again, an ant would fit across this field of view diameter at 40x. At 400x, um, a grain of salt would fit across this diameter. That's how small it is. So that's field of view diameter. How are we doing on that? Okay. When you look at something with different magnifications, the field of view diameter is going to change. The same object at low magnification will appear bigger at higher magnification. That's how zooming in works, how magnification works. But the field of view is smaller. So. The field of view here would actually just be like that, what we're actually looking at. So the end goal here is we want to figure out how to measure cell size, how to estimate cell size. Estimated cell size. To do that, we need to, to use the field of view diameter. Uh, let me give you a bigger... 
Okay, how big is this? This is one meter. Let's say we have this object, this bell. It fits across one, let's have to let you know how many times it fits across. It fits across about 10 times. If I were to show you one, two, three, four, five, it fits across 10 times. How big, if you estimated the size of this bell, how big is the bell? Knowing that this is a meter and this fits across 10 times. One tenth of a meter. So 0.1 meters, yeah, 0.1 meter. One divided by 10 is one tenth. That's the same idea of what I want you to do, but on, on a microscopic level. So let's go over some examples. Um, okay, here's an example. Let's say um, our field of view diameter, in this example, I should have given one that where it's already shown. The field of view diameter in this example is 1.6 millimeters. And we measure our cell. Um, I'm sorry, let me back up. Okay. One reason why I want you to sketch is because. By sketching, we can estimate cell size. When you sketch whatever you see under the microscope, I want you to use these sheets. I have a ton for you. You don't need to produce these on your own. I mean, they are online, but they're here for you. When you sketch, sketch what you see as best you can to scale. I know it's not gonna be perfect. I'm not expecting to be perfect, but as best you can to scale. So you draw whatever it is to scale. So let's say that we know that whatever magnification it is we're looking at in this example is 1.6 millimeters. I say draw to scale because what I'll want you to do is you'll take a ruler and you'll measure your, your cell. And you'll say, okay, your cell is four centimeters. That's what this ruler is measuring. The full diameter of this circle we're saying is 10 centimeters. So we're saying that this cell fits across roughly how many times? Two and a half. It fit, the cell fits across two and a half times. If you want to confirm that, you can, you can do 10 divided by four. That's two and a half. So to estimate the cell size, what would you do with that information? Knowing that it fits across two and a half times. Anyone want to? Be brave and take a stab at it. How would you estimate the cell size knowing that this cell fits across two and a half times and the field of view diameter is actually 1.6 millimeters? <coughs> times what? Or multiple divided up? Do what with the diameter? By <laughs> True. You point out something that this is in centimeters and this is in millimeters, but if you divide the two, well, then the unit will cancel out. So four divided by ten that cancels the unit out. So we have no units. So it's okay. Just getting the ratio. So there are two pieces of information that I told you. That the, it, it, we know that it fits across two and a half times, and that the actual field of view diameter is 1.6 millimeters. You divide 1.6 by 2.5. 1.6 divided by 2.5, whatever that is, I don't know off the top of my head. That's your answer. So the diameter of the field of view Yeah, so to, to write that out, write our formula out, we would take Field of view diameter divided by number of times the thing fits across. Let me give you one more example. I have more examples. If you go to the home page, um, where is it? Oh, 
If you go to the homepage, go to resources. So click on the resources button. Scroll down to microscopy histology. The first link here, cell size estimation tutorial. And there's also that scale of universe thing here. Click on that. Um, I suggest to test yourself, go into presentation mode. Presentation mode. It's exactly what we went over. Let's say you have this cell. Based on our grade, it fits across 10 times. And I'm telling you that this is at the total magnification of 400x. What's the field of view diameter at 400x total? It's 500 micrometers. So we know it fits across 10 times. We know the field of view diameter is 500. 500 divided by 10 is 50 micrometers. That's what we made the cell size. <laughs> I hope so. Try this. Try this one. You can talk to your neighbors if you want. Try it on your own, but do the math. What's the 400? Then he goes on to 500. What did you last this time? That's when you're looking at it. So you're at 400 times 10 equals 500. So that's where you get that 500. And then you can measure the size of the step. And then you do it once you get that number 505. I don't know how to do the size does it matter if it's on the bottom? Does it matter that it's on the bottom? It shouldn't. I mean, this, wherever you move this, it should be the same. So that, I'm just trying to like show you when you have it on your microscope, it's not always going to be perfect in size. So it's it four squares. So you can move it out of that fix. So yeah. four squares is five four squares. The diameter, you can think. All right, five let's walk through five. this. I'm giving you some important information here. We're at total magnification 400x. What is the field of view diameter? 500. The field of view diameter is 500. 500. Micrometers. That's our field of view diameter. We want to divide our field of view diameter by the number of times the cell fits across. I provide these guidelines for you. We want to do it not from this part, but from the widest diameter. So it takes up two squares, which means it fits across one, two, three, four, five times. Okay? The whole with the longest diameter of the circle, not just like a small slice of it. So it fits across five times. 500 divided by five. 500 divided by five. 100 by five, good. That is our estimated cell size, 100 by microns. This is the type of work I'm expecting you to show on these, these histology sketch sheets. There's room for you to write all this down when you estimate. There's more practice here, so I encourage you to check out the resources, cell size estimation tutorials, and good practices some more. <clears throat> okay, some more things, last few things about microscopes. It, it often gets dirty, dust gets on there, or people touch it. Please try not to touch your, your, your fingers on the actual lenses. 
our, we constantly produce oil and sweat, so we don't want to get that on the lenses. If it is dirty, at the end of each table, we have special lens paper. Don't use paper towels, because that will scratch. We have special lens paper, and we have this blue lens cleaner. Only use these things to clean the lenses, whether it's the ocular lens, uh, the objective lenses, anything. You can even clean the slides. Maybe the slides are a little smudged or dusty. Only use these to clean them. Yes? Yeah, every time you look at a cell, do you have to find the approximate size? Yes. Are you going to get a graded slide? Oh, gridded. Gridded. Are you going to get a gridded slide every time? Um, no. Which is why you're not going to get a gridded slide every time, which is why, as best you can, you're going to sketch to, to scale and then use a, a ruler to estimate it. <laughs> that, yeah, as best you can, draw to scale and you're using your ruler on your sheets to estimate cell size. How would you know? How would you know how big to draw it on the paper? Draw what you see. So, for example, Like you can see a bunch of cells here. Um, like this cell here, I would just as closely as I can, like see how many times it fits across and draw to that scale. If, if you need to, you can lay a grid down yourself, but you're just, this is the circle, here's the circle, you're drawing it to that size. It takes some practice, but you'll, you'll get there, right? I, I believe you. <laughs> All right, so yeah, if, it's, if anything's dirty, just try to clean it. Often gets in your way. Um, what else? If there's ever anything that you're unsure about how to put your microscope away, this is your checklist. So I'm not going to go over there right now because I went over most of it. But here is your official checklist on things you need to do before and after you get the microscope. And when you put it away properly, do all these things. We don't have any assigned, any assigned scopes, so you're going to go with that first one. Reminding you, the best way to find something under a microscope is to start at the lowest objective. It is really hard, even for me, if I start at 10x or 40x objectives. You should always start at the lowest objective, get that into focus, and then go to higher objectives if needed. Use the coarse focus knob only at the scanning lens. Do not use it on the 10x or 40x, and definitely not at 100x. You don't use the fine focus. Uh, this very last thing I'm going to go over after we take a break. Yeah, let's take a break. Come back at about 12:30, and I'll explain the rest of the lab check that you'll be doing. Oh.